Uh, number one, please. Okay, one going in now. Ready when you are. Okay, and go. Straight back. You good? Hey guys, welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. The little intro you saw is us packing up for our shakedown trip. You know, we just put this new suspension on and I really wanted to go somewhere close so that if we ran into any issues, we we're kind of in our home neighborhood, so to speak. So we didn't go real far, but you know, it was, it was a good way to just get the RV kind of dusted off since we've been still all winter and take a, take a feel on what this SRE 4000 and all of these cross members, X Factor cross members how they performed, how they held up. Just wanted to give you my initial thoughts on the system that I installed and any other learnings that I've had. So we'll dive right in. All right, so we are under the RV right now. This is the rear axle that we're looking at. So rear axle, front axle is above it. And so this is the rear cross member. This cross member is specifically designed for the correct track uh spring hangers the correct track is a little bit different from your typical spring hangers in that it has alignment plates and things like that so it's designed the cross member is designed just a little bit differently as you can see the yellow plate here this is the alignment plate and so there's an alignment plate on either side of the spring shackle or sorry the spring hanger and so they've designed this cross member to butt right up against that. So that's what's providing your lateral stability for the, uh, for the X Factor cross member. Now it is bolted on with three bolts on either side of the U channel. There's an extra plate here. I don't know how well that's showing up here in the video, but, um, this little line here is not a crack. It's actually a separate plate because this U channel on this end is slightly narrower to fit inside the u-channel on the other end and so these plates are just spacers so that this doesn't warp or bend as you tighten things in place each of these bolts is tightened to 40 foot pounds um, the ones that kind of hold the the member together and then these longer bolts and hopefully we can get a reasonable shot in here these longer bolts that hold these side plates to the spring, uh, the spring hanger. Uh, these are four and a half inches long. They're tightened to 26 PS, uh, PSI. No, that would be, um, incorrect. It'd be 26 foot pounds of torque. Um, so two bolts go in one direction and it looks like I do have some loosening. So I'm glad I'm under here right now. So we'll get that tightened up here in a moment. Hmm really glad i'm down here um so i'm gonna go ahead and inspect all of the bolts here make sure that we haven't uh loosened any and make sure everything is still you know the way it's supposed to be each of these cross members is held uh in place side to side by two parts so one channel and i'll take a vertical look here so one channel is slightly bigger than the other and that's what those extra plates on the end brackets are for and they're held on with eight bolts and you can see hopefully you can see in here there's a bunch of holes here and then the outside has slots so you can get the exact alignment for your suspension system and your spring hangers 
so that uh, everything is held right in place the way it's supposed to. Each of these bolts is also torqued to 40 PSI, and in our initial 20 miles or so that we drove, I don't see any scratching or slippage of these, and I did have to make a significantly tight turn to back into the site that we were, were in. So it looks like this is holding together quite well. And then this is just the other end here. Looks like I've got a little peeling of the powder coat. Uh, I'm not too pleased with that, but powder coat does that. Um, so yeah, that's from a manufacturing perspective. I guess there's a little down point there. And then we'll take a peek here. Uh, looks like everything is still butted up nicely against that alignment plate. So that looks good. And as you can see, uh, there is no secondary plate in between here. It is just the bracket from the U-channel and these end plates. So that is how, whoops, I just flaked one of those things off. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to keep an eye for rust around this stuff. Um, as things age a little bit, uh, this dry environment here in Colorado, not too much of an issue, but if, as we travel into more humid climates, uh, that could be a concern. So let's move forward now to the central bracket. So what I mean central is the one that's in between the axles. If you have a three axle suspension, I believe you're going to have two of these pieces uh, because they are specifically designed to go with this uh, equalizer component. So all the bolts are long enough and everything. And so I, I will get the torque wrench out here, but I just want to see if there's anything that seems to be loosened at all. And it seems to be holding up just fine. Now, the way that these ones work, rather than butting up against the... Uh, any sort of alignment plate, we have just a solid steel plate welded directly onto the end of the U-channel, and that is through bolted into the uh, equalizer and the hang the center hanger. So that is your vertical 90 degree component there, and the other side, just due to the way of the, the design, um, this should hold this outer bracket in the correct orientation as well. Again, two-piece installation uh, from the from the center. So again, you've got your eight bolts, holes on one side uh, on the inside piece, slots on the outside piece, and then the other end has the same plate set up. So um, these bolts, again, 40 foot-pounds, and I think these small ones that hold the spring hanger to the actual uh, bracket, I think these are 15. I'll put those numbers in the, in the video here and in the description down below. I want to make sure that those are accurately represented in this video. Um, what I'm looking at now is the actual SRE 4000. Uh, this is the rubber component of it. It looks like they've provided some sort of join or seal in between this firm rubber component and the, um, I think it's cast aluminum. If anybody knows for sure, let me know, and we'll make corrections as necessary. Uh, but this is the softening portion of the suspension system. Um, my experience on the road with these, and... As I'm taking a look at this, um, there's a it seems to be a pretty decent bulge on this. Comparing that to the other side, it looks like the other one is kind of bulging a little bit more than this one. Uh, I don't know if that is to be of concern. Somebody commented in my last video that they had some issues with this. So I am interested to see how that holds up over time. So we'll keep an eye on that and do, you know, a three months, six months re review or whatever. So if you subscribe to the channel, we will definitely show you what this experience is uh, after a few months. Now, from a drivability perspective, I don't know whether it's confirmation bias or whether it's actually 
uh, riding smoother than our previous Equiflex system. What I seem to have felt, and this is all like seat of the pants kind of stuff. Um, what I seem to have felt is less chucking, actually. Um, you know, there's a section of the highway that we frequent, frequently go down. And that part of the highway was not nearly as rough of a ride inside of the truck. So I don't know. It seems like these uh, SRE 4000s might actually make the overall ride much better. And I think that's what they're advertised to do. So if that's the case, I give it a plus one thumbs up. Well, that's all I really wanted to share today about the Moride SRE 4000 and X Factor cross members. Really, it was just kind of that first impressions look. We're going to be doing some bigger traveling this summer, so we'll get some miles on them and give you that review later on. And hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel so you can see that and an upcoming video since we've done some modifications, you know, the suspension, the batteries and all that stuff. We want to make sure that we're weighted properly, you know, making sure we're still within the gross vehicle weight rating for both the rig and the truck. So we'll be probably next week talking about what do all those numbers mean? What are our numbers? We'll give you the honest look and what we're, what we'll have to do, if anything, to kind of, kind of fit and balance our rig so that we are road legal. So that's really all right now. Again, my name's Todd. This is the Alcohol Free RV, and we do mods, repairs, and upgrades along the way. We'll see you next time.